Just recently, I was invited to talk about synth DIY at a local synth meetup organized by Synthicide. They're a group of synthesizer enthusiasts here in the Philippines. This was my first time meeting them. The group has been really supportive of my synth DIY stuff ever since I started, so I wanted to have a little something to give away during the event. I partnered with PCBWay and designed the synth card. It's basically my calling card, but it can also be assembled into an oscillator module. The circuit is based around the Atari Punk console. It's a beginner-friendly synth DIY project. It's only got two knobs. The first one is frequency, the second one is pulse width. I also like this circuit for its very minimal parts count. It can be powered using a 9V battery or a pedal power supply. If you're about to build this, it helps to have the schematic diagram as a reference. You can find those on my website linked in the description. Now let's go through the things that you'll need. First, you'll need a soldering iron and some solder. It also helps to have some flush cutters so you can have something to cut the wires and the leads of the components. I like to use a third hand tool like this one to hold my circuit board, but it isn't really necessary. Now for the parts. For the power connector, I recommend you use a guitar pedal power jack like this. They're called barrel jacks. Just make sure you wire it up correctly with the ground wire hooked up to the center. You can also use a 9V battery snap like this. You'll need a bunch of capacitors and resistors. For the potentiometers, I use these RV09 type ones. You can also use the RD901F since they have identical footprints. For the 3.5mm jacks, I recommend you use Tonkicon jack sockets if you have access to them. I don't usually stock those, I'm using this more common type and they work just fine. The 555 timer comes in different variants, I have tested this so far with the NE555P. Now let's move on to the build. The first thing I like to do is install the resistors. It's a good idea to work on the shorter components first and then work your way up. The pads are double sided so I like to solder the resistors from the top like this. I do the same with the ICs or the integrated circuits. These are the 555 timers. You can solder them directly onto the board. All you have to do is match the notch on the PCB with the notch on the body of the chip. For this, I solder one pin from the top and then solder the rest of the pins from the back. This way, I have less chances of accidentally hitting the chip with my iron. The other components are a bit fiddly because you can't solder them from the top. The LEDs will only work if you install them in the correct orientation. The cathode side with the shorter lead must go into the square pad. The cathode side is also marked with a flat side on the footprint. I use tape so I can flip the board over and then solder them from the back. I do the same with the ceramic capacitors. These things don't care which way you install them. I also use tape so I can solder them from the back. Be careful with the electrolytic capacitors. These ones are polarized. It's easy to identify though. You just have to match the stripe on the component with the shaded side on the board. The jacks are tricky for me because I don't have the right ones. For this ones, I have to cut off the little wire loops at the end and then connect the ground to the board using wire. The pots are easy. These have retention arms so they snap into place. For the power connector, I only had to strip the wire and then solder those onto the pads. Now let's see if it works. That wraps up this guide on how to assemble the synth card. I hope you found it helpful. I have a written version of this guide on my website, benjamodular.com. You can also reach out to me on Instagram or Facebook, at benjamodular if you need help. 
Now let me leave you with this quick jam I made using the synth card along with a couple of other synth DIY modules that I've built. See you on the next video.